is typically the height of ice fishing season, but this hasn't been a typical winter, and that has local ice fishermen on alert. We get that story from Eric Nelson. Welcome to Minnesota, the land of 10,000 partially frozen lakes. We haven't been making ice. We might even be losing a little bit, and it hasn't been cold enough at night to maintain the ice that we have. So we're really kind of stuck with this walkable ice. In a normal January, Lake Minnetonka is an ice fishing mecca. But this winter, because of mild temps and unpredictable ice conditions, there aren't many fish houses on the lake. We had a fish house near shore fall through, three quarter ton truck fall through ice near shore, and then uh, we had an ATV that went across a pressure ridge, which is highly not advised. At Spring Park Bay, there are nine inches of ice. According to the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office, ice is never safe and conditions constantly fluctuate. If you're at foot traffic and you check as you go, you're probably okay. ATVs, if you know the bay and you've checked, be careful. Motorized vehicles, cars, trucks, absolutely not. Meanwhile, on Medicine Lake in Plymouth, snow, slush, and above average winter warmth have put a dent in Joe Hardy's profit margin. The worst December ever. Not good for business. The lake is an ice fishing ghost town. Hardy knows that people won't come until extreme cold comes too. Those fish are doing nothing but getting bigger. They're not getting caught. However, letting the fish grow is better than falling through the ice into frigid water. Don't push it. Coming to get you, buddy. Hold on to that ice. If you should fall in, experts want people to use the 1101 system to get out. One minute to get your bearings straight, 10 minutes of trying really hard, and then you need to spend the next hour of conserving energy. There's a huge drawback if you bring a car or truck on the ice and it goes through into the water. You may get out, but it's going to cost thousands of dollars to get the vehicle out of the lake. Reporting on Lake Minnetonka, I'm Eric Nelson for CCX News. The new year marked the end of an era in Hennepin County. After three years, the county ended its textile recycling program, in large part because officials weren't sure what would happen with all of the materials. In the aftermath of the holiday season, Hennepin County's recycling drop-off site in Brooklyn Park becomes one of the most popular destinations in town. But as 2020 begins, the county's popular textile recycling program comes to an unceremonious end. We just felt it was disingenuous to continue the program knowing that um, we weren't 100% sure what was happening to it. Carolyn Colopy is one of the people who helped establish the program in 2016. Residents are always looking for outlets for material that is not um, usable, but they don't want to throw away. Since then, Hennepin County acted as that outlet for people to help ensure that unwanted textiles wouldn't end up in the waste stream. In 2018 alone, they collected 43 tons of materials, but over time, they could no longer guarantee that the fabrics would be recycled. The material was going out of the country for the most part, and it was getting bought. I mean, there there is a demand for this material, but um, to what extent the torn and soiled textiles were getting recycled, we couldn't confirm. In other words, the county didn't want to export something that could eventually end up as trash. If we generate trash here, we should deal with it here. It's We shouldn't be sending it to another country to become their burden. With that in mind, they decided to end the textile recycling program program on December 31st. Going forward, Colopy hopes people think twice before updating their wardrobe with new merchandise. Buying secondhand is, is a great option to kind of help with that uh, oversupply of clothing that is constantly flooding our economy. If you're looking for places to donate textiles that people can reuse, we have a link on our website at ccxmedia.org. The Hennepin County Attorney will enlist the help of a new employee in the new year. Only this one will have four legs. County Attorney Mike Freeman said their office will join the growing number of county attorneys to have an emotional support animal Happy on staff. New year to everyone. Meet the newest addition to the Hennepin County. Other county attorney offices, including Ramsey County, have got support dogs. We find that they're particularly useful in juvenile cases. When kids don't want to be witnesses, they don't want to be there. As you can see, holding this dog has calmed me down.
Barrett is a four-month-old golden doodle who has been in training since November. He is currently assimilating to the surroundings in the Hennepin County Office Building and will begin his full-time duties working with staff, victims and witnesses in about 12 months. The Minnesota DNR considers trail conditions for cross-country skiing to be very good across the state. Skiers can also enjoy the sport at Elm Creek Park Reserve in Maple Grove. The park has more than 11 miles of trails that are groomed for classic and skate skiing. The trails range in difficulty from beginner to advanced. You can rent equipment at the chalet. As we go to break, we'll leave you now with more of the sights at Elm Creek. kicked off in a great way for the University of Minnesota football team. The Gophers got big contributions from three defensive players from the northwest suburbs in their Outback Bowl victory over Auburn. Senior linebacker number 41, Thomas Barber, Armstrong High School grad and Plymouth native, recovered a muff punt early in the game to gain possession for the Gophers. Barber also had an impressive tackle for loss here in his final game as a college player. Number 90, Sam Renner of Maple Grove, a former walk-on at the U, contributed a sack early in the second half for the Gophers and also went out in style in his last game in a Minnesota uniform. And number 34, Boya Mafe, a sophomore who played for Hopkins High School, had a sack right before halftime in the Gophers 31-24 Outback Bowl victory. Boyzetta well, assistant boys hockey coach Bill Rooney celebrated a major milestone late last week. Rooney was honored in a pregame ceremony at Plymouth Ice Center prior to coaching in his 700th game. Rooney has been a high school hockey coach for more than two decades. He was a head coach at Cooper High School for 18 seasons and has been a Trojan's assistant since 2015. We asked Rooney what keeps him coming back year after year. The love of uh, the game and um, just the kids, just being around the kids. It's just fun to teach and uh, um, try to pass on what you've learned and uh, hopefully they do the same when they're older. Rooney's 700th game was a win as Wyzetta beat St. Michael Albertville 7-2. 2019 was a memorable year in high school sports in the northwest suburbs. CCX Sports' Jason Millillo put together some of the best moments. I was like, it's probably going to be a 9-9 like, please be a 10, please be a 10. Otto into the front court. He'll put up an arcing three short. Laporia Jule, Park Center, wins section 5 for a 57, 55, and three overtime. I can't even describe it. I'm so emotional right now. See when you used to have hair. First, been consistently good on the boards, and that's a big three right there. Congratulations to Hopkins High School state champions. will take it one-on-one. -on -one. No, she wants to give it back to her teammate. It's a behind the championship girls basketball team. Here's Rallon and go for the wraparound try. Buckets loose. Stinsley knocks it in. Section champions in girls hockey. Uh, great effort by her. Oh! Uh, number one for Wyzetta. 
No, he does swing and miss, and the Hopkins Royals are Section 6 champions. Picked up here, and a shot in the goal. Speechless, honestly, about uh, what happened. Miller's gonna run it. Miller oh. will break through, and he's gonna go for the touchdown. Jace Miller for 42 and a score, and the Rebels are heading to the prep board. A third and goal from the four. Vassar getting to the end zone. Now, goal to go. Vassar straight ahead. Fifth touchdown of the yeah. 